the declaration of Jesus inviting the people to eat his flesh and drink his blood is truly shocking to his listeners. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? In fact, they were scandalized and insulted by his words. If we hear those words for the very first time, we would surely be baffled as well. Most likely we will say, are you serious? Are you out of your mind? Fortunately for us, we have already heard these words so often that we are not anymore surprised. Furthermore, it must be noted that the Jews have great reverence for and even fear of blood, which they consider as the source of life. A person who touches blood immediately becomes ritually unclean. That is why in the parable of the Good Samaritan, the priest and the Levite ignored the injured traveler, most certainly because he was bleeding and they were unwilling to risk their temple duties by being tended unclean. Of course, Jesus is not talking in the physical sense. Rather, he is talking in a sacramental sense. This will be made clear to the toll at the Last Supper when Jesus, holding the bread, says, This is my body, eat it. And holding the cup of wine, says, This is the cup of my blood, drink it. Jesus is not talking symbolically, but in a real and sacramental sense. Hidden behind the form of bread is the real flesh of Jesus. Behind the form of wine is the real blood of Jesus. He insists on this in his discourse. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Strange and incredible it may sound, but there are saints who have proven this to be true. They literally took these words to heart and lived solely on the Eucharist as their food. These saints concretely illustrate that the body of Christ is true food and drink, and that it is indeed possible for men to live without food, but not without the Eucharist, the bread of life. Then Padre Pio declared, it would be easier for the world to survive without the sun than to do without the holy sacrifice of the mass. <laughs> 